Welcome to the Feminine Truth Podcast with Mary Miranda, a place where you can reconnect with your wild, cyclical, and fierce truth. I am Mary Miranda, a mentor, coach, healer, and intuitive. I guide women on a journey of remembrance, reconnection, and embodiment of who they are, their essence, power, and truth by reawakening the power of their feminine energy, womb, and menstrual cycles. Join me each week to indulge in raw, unedited, and unfiltered topics to help women own and step into their divine feminine truth and become unshakable, unapologetic, and bold in who they truly are. Let's jump into today's conversation. Welcome to another episode of the Feminine Truth Podcast for this season two. I am so excited to bring to you my guest today. We're going to talk about all things womb, pleasure, being in their feminine, and she's going to tell us amazing things regarding the feminine and just all about it. It's going to be amazing. So Abby, can I welcome to the podcast? Thank you so much, Miranda. I'm so happy to be here and just blessed to be able to have this yummy conversation with you today. Yeah, I'm so excited to for you to say yes. And it's an honor to speak with you today. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your story, how you ended up doing, not only doing the work that you do, but being who you are at this moment. Mm, amazing. So First of all, um, I a little bit about the work that I do, and I'd love to share my story and how it leads full circle back to that. I guide women into experiencing deeper pleasure in their bodies, to connect them to their wombs, to heal their wombs for any pain that they're carrying so they can have blissful bleeds. I do a lot of ancestral healing. I'm also a support coach and masterminds and programs. And for nine years, I've been working with plant medicine. I've sat with many indigenous tribes and one of my biggest passions is to bridge the ancient with the modern. So really going back to the roots and really going back to the ancestral ways and the ways that indigenous have connected to the earth and how we have so much to learn from them. I'm a big, big, big stand for indigenous rights and women's rights. And I'm an advocate for children's rights as well. So it's a really big part of my work and here to just bring an end to suffering. That's really the the big purpose of what I do what I do and to see women in their full power and their full pleasure and just being empowered in who they are so how that journey began for me was back in 2012 I remember just like I was in a jog and I was just drinking a lot and I remember just like admitting to myself for the first time I'm really not happy like I I just keep drinking every weekend like I don't really have goals for my life, even though I was always quite a ambitious. I've always been quite ambitious. And I remember, like, I didn't have any belief then. I didn't know about God or anything, but I knew that there was something else out there. And I just, like, said it out loud one day. I really want to change my life. Like, help. Like, please help me. Send me a sign. I just, I want to make my life better. I want to be happy. And then I quit drinking. And then um, I went to the gym. And then my mom sent me a message saying <laughs> there's a personal development workshop this weekend do you want to go and I was like sure I didn't even look it up I had no idea what I was walking into and I do my first personal development seminar I signed on to do the next thing and then the next coaching course and even though that really impacted my life I felt like I just needed to still go on quite a journey I was still quite young I was like 21 and me and my brother had booked tickets to go to Central and South America So we went there for an entire year, which changed my life. I sat in plant medicine and back then no one was even talking about it. I got a message. Um, I don't even know how I found out about it. It's just this message I got and I started researching it and sat with the tribe and learned from the indigenous peoples and just traveled through these phenomenal countries that have impacted my heart forever and learned, you know, learned from tribes that have been around so much longer that, than we have and just developed such a deeper level of respect and humility. And unfortunately, at the end of my trip, I was sexually assaulted and I chose to have an abortion. And, and then I just remember I was sitting on this beautiful sacred beach in Mexico with the hand, my hands over my, my womb and I said, 
I am going to protect you. I am going to understand you. I am going to keep you safe. It was like the first time in my life that I really actually connected to my womb. And so it's been, there's, there's been so many things. It's been such a big journey from then until now, but I ended back in Mexico, which is super special after that seven year cycle came back here to Mexico. But in between that time, that's led me to here now. I've had many dark nights of the soul, deaths, rebirths, initiations, gone through so many immense challenges, heartbreak, betrayal, yeah. lost my father to suicide, <laughs> gone through different types of abuse. And I really see now from everything I was being initiated into was to help people on the deepest level possible because I know what it feels like to go through dark nights of the soul, to feel alone, to suffer, to feel so betrayed by, by people and to really be able to hold that level of transformation with other people to help them understand their shadow for them to really step into their power. And so from all the darkness and all of the, the things I've experienced, I now am able to hold that level of depth of transformation and authenticity for other people because I've walked that path because I've been through it. And so I'm so passionate about people just in a nutshell, just being free freedom is everything to me so yeah that's a bit of bit about my story and my journey it's so beautiful thank you so much for sharing and the vulnerability factor especially around your sexual assault thank you so much for sharing that i know it, mm -hmm. it, i'm so sorry you went through that um mm -hmm. i've had a similar experience um 2017 so i know what it's like and actually this is so beautiful because i did the same reclamation to my womb in 2018 and that's when I started reconnecting with my womb and I made a promise because I was in the about to go and get surgery and get a fibroid nine centimeter fibroid tumor removed from my uterus and I didn't know what they were going to find out if they were going to be able to save my uterus and my I only have one um ovary and I made a promise. I'm like, if the surgeon <laughs> saves my uterus and my ovary and if I'm still able to be a mom And if I'm able to have my organs, then I'm going to, I promise I'm going to take care of you, cherish you, honor you in my womb. And that's how I started with my blood rituals, with reconnecting with my womb and doing womb healing, you only the armoring and everything. So I completely relate to you. And also the surrendering, wow. the surrendering factor in your story that you just looked up to a higher power and you're like, I can't do this alone help me like I just got like goosebumps all over my body well thank you so much for sharing and I'm so sorry you went through that as well and I'm just so happy that you connected to your womb in that moment in a similar way I got chills when you shared that like what a story of reclamation and power and I'm just yeah I'm so sorry you went through that as well it breaks my heart that women go through that But then when I hear another woman's story, it just, I'm always in awe in the strength of woman. Yeah. And I think it's, it's so empowering. We as coaches, when we have gone through so much chaos, so much struggle, so much suffering, so much, just like experiences that we can be better coaches and guides and mentors for the clients or the people that the women that trust us with our guidance, because we're like, we've been there, we can relate so much better with them. Because I'm like, yes. I understand exactly what you are going through. I understand. And they and it's like, it, they con just like the relationship and the connection with them gets so much deeper. And they, a they're able to lean more back into their feminine and open up to you and their healing. I think it's just so beautiful. Yes, you said that so beautifully. That's it. That is absolutely it. And then you can take them to those places because you've been there yourself. And, and being a feminine coach whilst incorporating the womb wisdom is like, oh, how do you even put that into words? It's like next level magic because that's where so much of our power resides is in our womb. It's yeah. where we create life. And, yeah, the womb is exceptional. She's just so divine. <laughs> It's our source of power. <laughs> and I think even the people, the women that don't have their uterus anymore, they don't realize they're, they have an energetic womb, like the energetic yes. is still there. And, yes. that's why, and it's so interesting, because when I lost my ovary, my right ovary in 2006, due to a rupture cyst, I remember I had so many years that I felt less of a woman. 
because I did not have an organ, like one part of my half of my organ. And I just remember that when I found out that I still have energetic, my energetic print of that ovary, that just made me feel like whole again and accept myself. But the interesting thing is that when I, I have endometriosis too, so some periods, it depends though, some periods can be very painful, but I rarely have painful mm-hmm. periods. And the pain is where my ovary, when I where the place where I don't have an ovary. So wow. it's just like, it's like, what is going on? Besides the scarring tissue, I'm just like always in, in like amazingness of what is going on that my body remembers. Oh, chills. Yes, that's it. The body remembers and it's mm-hmm. still there, you know? And I was on a, I was doing a masterclass yesterday and <clears throat> I was talking about menopause. And I said, I still feel like even if you've gone through menopause, that going through the cycle is still really healthy as a woman, like still spending time to rest and like, like that would be the premenstrual week and bleeding and, you know, not just being in the doing energy all the time. And then a few of the women shared on there, that's the exact same message they heard too, that women still move in cycles, even if they have, if, when they've stopped physically bleeding. So yeah, I love that you shared that too. That's so beautiful. Yeah. So like, what, how do you feel your life has changed? Like in the connection that you have with yourself after you started doing this work about womb reconnection, your womb healing, your pleasure and all this embodiment practices? Oh my gosh. Amazing question. Oh, it just feels like every part of me changed. You know, I used to be quite self-conscious and didn't really have a lot of confidence. And then my confidence just grew like so rapidly and it wasn't from the external validation because that's where I was still a lot of my energy was just wanting that external validation especially from men Mm. and then it's like I was able to self-resource and it was like organic natural confidence you know not from me even doing or achieving anything but just feeling that inner glow of just taking such good care of myself and then learning about my womb. I remember joining my first ever online women's program and I learned about menstruation and the womb. And I remember crying on and off for months because I just grieved this lost information that so many women we haven't, you know, we haven't received this initiation. And then it's like, and then I just felt myself rise up and claim my power and go like, wow, this is, this is my birthright. And I remember saying one day I'm going to teach this to women. And this is literally what I do now. I'm like, when I embody this, when I'm in full integrity with this, I'm going to teach this to other women because every woman has a right to know her power and her birthright. So I just feel how much my power has increased and my confidence, my my gifts have come out because I've been just so deeply connected to my womb and my feminine nature. Uh, My relationships have changed and the way that I relate to people, just having way more compassion and understanding for where they're at being able to really connect to people in such an authentic space where I'm just completely myself and, you know, not pretending to be someone I'm not like I did when I was younger or pretending to be happy when I wasn't and just really being able to stand in my power and hold women in their power too. And the the orgasms and the the sex (laughs) and like the, the pleasure I feel from life. And just also simultaneously how much I allow myself to feel my emotions now. I used to numb out. I used to have addictions and I used to want it like escape and I would self-abandon my body all the time. And now it's just like I can feel when that wants to happen and then I choose something else. And then when grief comes up, I feel my grief. I'm more comfortable in my emotions. So that's the the main things that have that have changed me forever. So it's like a 360 change in all of your body, (laughs) mind, and soul. And I just feel like we're missing this rite of passage from being a child to being a maiden. Like nobody tells us like that, you know, they just give you a pad, like a period pad, or they just (laughs) whatever, you know, like my mom never talked to me about this rite of passage of my menstrual cycle. Like, yeah. I still remember, I, it was just like, it, I, it was abundant. My, it's always been like, my flow has always been super abundant. So like, I felt like I was wearing a diaper and nobody, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody ever told me their changes and their rite of passage that comes emotionally. 
like the, the emotional wave, like yes. how my hormones are changing, how my body's changing. Like I was clueless <gasps> for so many years. And I remember when I started reconnecting with my period and my womb and everything, like in the last years, I'm like, oh my God, how did I live all my life without this knowledge since I got my period? Like right. emotionally, I was not even there, not even close. And oh. I just, and you know, and we as women judge ourselves like every single day of our monthly cycle and not knowing that our emotions are completely affected. And also the moon phase affects <laughs> our menstrual cycle, which affects our emotions. And then we feel so chaotic and we feel like we have multiple personality disorders <laughs> when in reality, it's a different version and archetype within us that is coming through yes. depending on our face depending on what we're eating it's so much it's so much that goes into it that i think it should be included in the school like as a yes. curriculum oh my, god. Yes. oh my gosh i love that you shared this and i talk about this with my clients too it's the same <laughs> for me like i wasn't initiated by my mom i was just handed a box of pads and i just had to like figure out why blood was coming out like it's just like what's going on Oh, I'm like, what does this mean? You know, even just that one question, what does this mean now? And yes, the hormones, I thought I was crazy. And then going to school and then all the embarrassments I had sometimes and a bit of blood leaked and I was the same. I always had a heavy bleed. I was always quite abundant as well. And yeah, it should definitely be at school. And I just feel for us as young women and young girls that the embarrassment and shame that most of us experience when it's the most natural thing in the world. It is, it is even up to today, like it, people are so ashamed to even say periods, menstrual cycles. Yeah. Um, it's like the time of the month or they just like cover up under this n undercover names that I'm just like, why are we doing that? Like, yes. even we're not supposed to talk about it in front of men because men might cringe or feel disgusted. But I'm like, no, it's such a beautiful experience. And if men yes. knew, if men knew how to all this information, they'll be able to be better partners for us during our like monthly cycle at each phase. They'll know how, what's going on with us. And in turn, they can help us or be better partners and be yes. there for us emotionally. Right. Because they're always like, Oh my God, are you, are you in your days? <laughs> and you know, they always assume that. And it's like, why, why do, why do they have that? <laughs> Totally. I love that you shared that as well. And, you know, my partner at the moment, we've been together almost 10 months and he's been so amazing from the beginning, like so open. And he shared with me, he's like, yeah, like none of, you know, I don't really know any women who shared this with me or who embody it like you do. And I want to learn. And it's so great. It's been so healing for me because like he knows now he can track where I'm at in my cycle and he can feel when I'm going from, you know, the day when you go from ovulation to premenstrual, yes. like it's such a dramatic shift, you know, it's like, I'm like, woohoo. And then the next day it's like, oh my God, my breast is so sore. And like, <laughs> Oh my God, I just feel so different. <laughs> and he can feel it now. He can actually notice it. And it's been so healing because I'll just say to him, like, I'm premenstrual, so I just may be a bit more distant. I may just want more space. You know, I don't want to be as social and go out as much. And he's just so respectful and honoring. So I love that you shared that because it would change so much in relationship if that man was open to that and he you know, and then the woman shares it with him because it really is a beautiful experience to share it with a man who's really open. Yeah. And not all men are like, some are completely totally to it because of stigma, because of they're just not interested. They just don't understand it because they're never been educated. They have always been taught that that's a women's thing. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about that, <laughs> you know? Yes. And there is an app. I track my cycle on this app and this app can completely uh, you can enter your partner's email address and they get notified of each face, how they can support oh you. Gosh. Yes. So like I, when I did have a partner uh, a few years ago, I completely signed him up for it, but I explained to him my faces. I'm like, here, this is how you can support me better. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, he knew what to do. He knew better because also I would voice it out and it was great. And then obviously the relationship ended. He was removed, <laughs> but, 
but now I'm like, I'm like, I dated someone else who was completely terrified of blood. He would faint. And I was like, okay, I'm like, this is just not going to work because I collect my blood. I do blood rituals. Like, how is this even going to work for me? No. So that ended. Wow. So now I'm like, okay, I'm going to call in a partner that is open to <laughs> potentially have an open mind and be open to yeah. this because dating now for me has changed because of the work that I do and it took a few it took healing for me to be like are they gonna accept me they're gonna think mm. I'm too much they're gonna think I'm crazy they're gonna think like oh my gosh she's like a witch or something and let alone I attracted a man who was Christian who share my pictures i caught him sharing my picture me doing my blood rituals like in mexico i'm like here with my open legs open and i have blood in my face and he shared that with his friends and i don't really know what it was talked about but i know they were judging me and that mm. hurts me but i'm like well i'm like at the same time i know he's not the man for me and i yes. how how were you able so when you attracted your partner that you've been with 10 months did he initially ask you like what is this about or how did the conversation came about or he followed you on social media like how yeah. did it happen <laughs> great question and thank you so much for sharing about your exes I've definitely been with a couple of men in the past that it's like they won't discuss it but like they could have been and I wouldn't have known they were just didn't want to kind of talk about it mm. and actually one of my exes um really really helped me to become comfortable um, that's before I started my journey with my womb. Actually, I met him right after I claimed that I was going to protect my womb and he, he was so comfortable with it. So bless his heart. He really helped me on my journey. But my current partner, um, I, I think because I'm just at this stage where I'm so comfortable in talking about it, especially to the males in my life, like male clients, I, I have some male clients, mainly women, males in my life. I just share hey, it may take me a couple of days to get back to you. I'm bleeding right now. And so I just have become so comfortable in voicing that to them. And I feel like they they just kind of like adjust. Men, men are so amazing like that. They kind of just feel where you're at and adjust. And they're like, because you're just like, I'm not going to have any men in my field who can't respect and honor that. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if I was to say that to a man and he responded, you know, in a way that he was you know, perplexed or disgusted, well, I'm just going to let him deal with that. But with, yeah, with my beautiful partner, he, I just started speaking about it, I think quite earlier on. And he was just like, cool. Like at <laughs> first, I think he was a bit like, he wasn't used to it. Yeah. And then after a while, he just got used to it and he was really open. And then he started asking questions. But I think too, like men, most men, this is what I held in my heart the most. I'm like, most men want to know these things. And I just made that a truth for me. The men around me want to know these things. They want to be initiated by me. They want to understand this. They want to respect it. And I just kept saying that and believing that. And then it just like, you know, it kept happening. And I feel like most men do want to know. And if they respond in that way that they did to you, for example, that's just their own fear yeah. and their own programming. And, you know, I, I just honor you and all women who bear their souls and share that because it takes so much courage because <laughs> look at the lineage. I doubt our ancestors yes. all like got to do that, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's actually, I was recently like I was on TikTok. So like my period rituals are very sacred to me. Mm -hmm. And when my brother found out, he blocked me from Facebook. He asked me not to post any of that or not to do any of that around my niece, which I have to understand and respect his boundaries. You know, I cannot expect my family to understand my line of work or my rituals or what I do for my self-care, you know? So I was like, okay, that hurts. But I'm like, okay, I accept it. So the other day, my niece, who's nine years old, was on TikTok. And I was doing my meditation. I come out from the room for my meditation. She's like, auntie, is this you? And she shows me my picture on TikTok with my blood smear on my face where I did, I was published in the UK. So I gave those pictures for them to publish. And this, wow. this, this 
people, I think they're actually based in the UK. I can't remember the name of the brand and I'm not going to name them because that's just not, not even the point. They use my picture without my consent. And they just said, oh. this woman uses period uh, blood for a facial to help with the nutrients. So like it was a little positive. The post, the post was what they said in the video was positive. It was not negative, but all the comments that came after that, mm. that's not even what got me. What got me is that my niece didn't know about this. Uh, my niece did not had any awareness that I did this rituals because I being, you know, they're my own thing that I do when she's not looking. Yes. So she's like, auntie, um, why are you doing that? What is that on your face? And I'm like, she's nine. I don't know when her period is coming, but for me, I have been saving all this knowledge with her mom's permission to share it with her when her time comes. So like when I had to explain to her a little bit what, what it was, that just completely broke my heart because I have been saving this knowledge, this medicine for mm. her to know, and they took that away from me. And that was what hurt me. Not the really? negative comments, because I expect that, you know, not everybody's on board with this. And it takes a lot of courage to put your smear blood on your face and post it publicly, you know. So, of course, I'm going to attract the flip side of what I desire. Yes. You know? yes. So that that was really hard recently. And then I was like, you know what? I'm like, it's OK. I'm like, everything is OK. So I had to message my brother and let him know. And her mom, I let her know. And I was like, I did not do this intentionally like I this was done without my knowledge and of course I contacted the company and they took down the video they apologized but I'm like the damage is done you guys like took away something that was so yes that was when I was going to share this with my niece mm. you know absolutely so now, yeah so now I'm more empowered now it's like okay like how can I make this even better now that she knows a little bit so when her time comes she gets this rite of passage that I didn't get, <sighs> you know, and she's my goddaughter. So like, for me, it's like, I have this duty with her. Of course, I have to talk to her parents to make sure it's okay. You know, mm. but um, it's like, I don't want her to go through the painful periods. I don't want her yes. to question her body, her moods, her, all of that. I just don't want yes. that for her. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for sharing that story. It's so beautiful and so empowering. And oh, I'm sure that's just going to impact so many women that listen to this, you know. And I love that you shared that about your niece and, you know, how that impacted you. And just that's how I feel too about when my nieces grow up. The they're like seven and five. I'm just so excited to share this knowledge and wisdom with them because I don't want them to go through what I went through either. Mm -hmm. And how amazing is it that we get to pass this on what we didn't get mm -hmm. and that we have brought this ancient wisdom back to life. So I just have so much respect for that. Yeah. And if you think about it from this perspective, we are their future ancestors, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the, le oh, I got goosebumps. The legacy, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> the legacy <laughs> we are leaving behind is not only for them, it's also for their feminine lineage. Like you said earlier, my feminine lineage was not doing what I do. I'm like the mm -hmm. first one and I'm pretty sure they judge, me, they judge me 100% and I'm okay with it. But now <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm here to carve a new path for my feminine lineage and I don't know if I'm gonna have children but for me it's like my nieces right now are my legacy and they're my why honestly they are my why so now it's like how do I want to lead myself as their future ancestor not only for them I don't it's not that I don't want to be forgotten but I want to know that I brought wisdom and from ancestral wisdom because this is what women used to do in the past and then it was kind of eradicated yes oh my god I got like chills and I got tear <laughs> tears in my eyes you sharing that I just oh it's something I say all the time we're the future ancestors and just hearing you say it and what that means for you just yeah I'm still covered in tingles <laughs> oh Yes, it's been eradicated, you know, and I love that you brought up initiation rights and it's something I'm so passionate about, you know, sitting and learning from the elders, learning that ancient wisdom that is so needed for us to understand our path and to walk it with more clarity and more humility and more love and 
to know like why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. And I just feel like our yeah. ancestors, the women in our lineages, they didn't know better, you know? So now we have yeah. this, this opportunity to leave a legacy, not only for our family, our lineages, but for the women that follow us, because then they're also going to have their feminine lineages, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just like this ripple effect. So like what, how, what kind of ancestor do you desire to be? Oh, you just asked the most amazing questions. Wow. Oh, I don't even think I've ever been asked that before. Wow. <laughs> so beautiful. <clears throat> I definitely desire to be an ancestor who has left a legacy for all beings on the planet, but especially women and children. An ancestor that was so bold and courageous, like no matter what, no matter what, I was always bold, always courageous, always stood in my truth, spoke my truth and lived a life that was so much bigger than me, so much bigger than just the things that I wanted. It was for the, the next lineage to come after me and for the next seven generations. And I desire to be an ancestor that is always remembered as, as a woman who went above and beyond and who brought so much liberation to humanity and especially to women, women in slavery and children that are being trafficked, that I did the best that I could to bring more awareness to that and help bring an end to that because that is my biggest mission is bringing an end to child trafficking and women slavery. And that's the legacy I'm here to leave behind is to bring an end to that. You know, I notice how a lot of people get into the thinking of thinking that war is normal, like this is just how life is. And I don't believe that in any part of my being. It's not how it's meant to be. And that's the answer. So I want to be remembered as that I made my mark and that I lived for so much more than just me. So, yeah. That's so powerful. And the way you ended it, you're living for something that is beyond you. You know, there's a bigger purpose than just us. And it's, it is about us, but at the same time, it's not about <laughs> us anymore. It's about yes. everything else, you know. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Thank you so much for oh, sharing that. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Such an amazing question. Thank you. So, like, I'm just curious about pleasure. How has the relationship with pleasure changed for you? Ooh, uh, <laughs> this is such <laughs> yummy, juicy timing because I've just like, I'm launching something tomorrow all around pleasure. It's just a new offering and um, pleasure for me. Oh, it's so deep. It's so multifaceted, but I came into this world, a really sensual being. I was just so ecstatic with life. And I remember at a young age listening to really feminine, like ancient feminine kind of like, goddess mystical music at a really young age um I just would find this music that on my mother's cd collection and listen to it and like I would just start to move like I remembered something really ancient and old and I started like touching myself at a really young age but it felt so taboo mm. like it felt like I can't talk about this there's something wrong but like I just love to to touch my body and it felt good and um my, my pleasure got a bit distorted, you know, growing up with watching, you know, movies and, and Hollywood and just all of that stuff that came in a little bit. So my pleasure got a bit distorted on the journey. It was more about kind of seeking validation from men through pleasure. And, uh, but within that, I actually allowed myself to explore so much through sex. I really wanted to, and my Lilith in my astrological chart is in Scorpio, Ooh. which is all about uncovering the taboos with sex and power and wanting to just go to the bottom of everything. And that definitely is me with, with sex and pleasure. It's just wanting to understand who I am on the deepest level. And so I really explored myself through through sex and with my partners and really allow myself to release any shame from my lineage and from growing up and from society. And I really liberated myself in so many different ways. And to me, sex is the greatest art form. And now where I'm at in my relationship to my pleasure is, you know, sex isn't an addiction anymore. Or it's not like an escape, but it's really that gateway to God, to the divine, to 
to more of my own divinity, even if the sex is a bit wild or even if it's slow and tender and really gentle to me, it's all divine. And I'm here to really celebrate that when it's done with integrity and consent and love with you and another, when it's done with respect and reverence, even if the sex is wild and, and primal, or even if it's really gentle and tender to me, it's all holy when it's done from the heart and it's done with deep respect. And to me now pleasure is, and of course it's not just sex, but I use sex as an example because that's where we absolutely expand in pleasure so much. But to me, pleasure is like, Oh, I wake up and I hear the birds here in, in Mexico that just make me smile so much. I eat mangoes. I'm just oh. like, oh, my. <laughs> and I just feel so, like, before our podcast, I had, like, two mangoes and I was just like, oh, my gosh, just so much pleasure. It's like when I wear a favorite piece of clothing and it feels so good on my skin, you know, like pleasure to me is being open to life. You know, and even if I feel grief in my heart, like, oh, there's pleasure in that too. There's pleasure in heartbreak. There's pleasure in grief. So to me, pleasure really is just so deep and multi-layered and deeper than just sex. But yeah, pleasure is just like, I'm saying yes to life. I want life to crack me open and make love to me and de-armor my heart. <laughs> I just feel like there's such a taboo, like you said, with sex and well, with pleasure more than anything, because we are automatically put shame on it or the purity culture or the religious, your religious upbringing, kind of like, it's just like this layer compounded, tangled up thing yes. that it shouldn't be like that. But so many women have been brought up with this religious belief systems that they have to you know, it's, you can't do anything until you get married and yes. you are learned to think of yourself as unholy and pure, even if you have yeah. thoughts or even if you have sensations mm. and it's just like, it suppresses your womanhood. It suppresses this life force energy. I think yes. sex and pleasure are energies for me. And it just yes. like this connects you more and more from yourself and from you. And yes. It's, it's just so sad how so many women kind of just suppress themselves and I'm being one of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it really breaks my heart as well. And especially religion, you know, and I have no judgments against, against anyone and what their beliefs are. You know, I say God, but I just believe in, in the power of, of love. We can call it creator source. Um, I always respect everyone's unique beliefs, but yes, it absolutely has been so suppressed in religion and even through school, right? Just kind of like society in general, mm -hmm. you know, of just like that, that pleasure and absolutely our pleasure is, it's so pure. And, you know, even though I was always connected to my pleasure, it, it still, I still didn't feel that I was pure. And that's the part of me that I've really reclaimed these last like three years especially is that wow my pleasure is pure like I'm not oh my gosh like there is nothing impure about pleasure and feeling good and wanting to have sex and make love and also to all the women who tune into this like you can feel so much pleasure without having sex you know sex isn't yeah. dependent on feeling lots of pleasure we are the ones that self-source and generate our own pleasure mm -hmm. sex just amplifies it if we're already connected to our pleasure Um, so yeah, I love that you shared that. And I just want all women to be liberated in their sexuality and in their bodies and whatever that means for them, you know, it's going to be different for every woman. <clears throat> yeah, no, totally. And for me, it's been a lot of redefining that word purity. What does it mean to be holy, pure, to be like without, I don't, I hate the word sin because that was so nice. <sighs> That was like embedded all over me when I was growing up. So for me, purity now, it's like getting back to yourself, to your truth, to your essence. Mm. You are underneath all the conditioning, programming, religious belief systems. Like, who are you? My truth. Like, that is me being pure, getting back to that essence Before yeah. I was, <laughs> you know, before I was pretty much 
told something that it wasn't me, you know? So now it's like, okay, like, how can I now have this amazing relationship with pleasure and sex? Because right now I'm in it. I'm doing deep healing around sexual trauma around because mine is very tangled up in religious and sexual Mm. assault and everything. So now it's like delaying that. And it's like, what it's, what is my truth now? How can Mm. I move from here? You know, absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing that in your experience. I can imagine how many women this is going to support so much. And I just honor your journey. And I'm so, yeah, I'm just so in awe of you and your your strength and your story. It's just going to, it can, I know your work already impacts so many women from, yeah, just seeing you online and who you are. So I just want to share, like, it's so beautiful to hear your story. Thank you. So I think it's so huge uh, to heal trauma from our wombs. So what are some ways that you have practices or anything that you have done for yourself and also f- that has helped you in your work with your clients? Mm, yes, amazing. I love talking about this. So one of the things that has helped immensely with healing trauma from my womb is doing ancestral healing. Mm -hmm. So we not only carry our, you know, our own pain in our womb from our life experiences, including emotional, sexual, physical pain in there, even spiritual, but also our ancestral lineage, because that all gets passed down you know, woman to woman, womb to womb. So, and whatever way you wish to do that, whether you can take yourself through a ritual, you could even go on YouTube and find something that someone has posted, or you could hire someone that specializes in this field that does ancestral work and healings um, and set your intention for it to be from your womb, clearing the lineage out from your womb, the women who came before you, including your mother. Um, So that's definitely a really important one. Another one is Yoni eggs. I have been using them for seven years and they are just so healing for the womb. They are so beautiful. And I would recommend starting off with jade. I know a lot of people are selling all different types of crystals, but jade is the original um, Yoni egg that has been going on for such a long time, way long before we came here. And there's a reason for that with Jade's properties. It helps really release a lot of dense energy from the womb, a lot of trauma, because we can store it, we store it inside the walls of, of the vagina and it can feel numb in some of those areas. So the egg goes into those areas and the the womb, she just our yoni knows what to do to release tension. And you just set an intention before you put the egg in and you just you can feel it moving around you and sometimes you may not even notice it, but it's releasing things. Um, so yoni eggs are also really, really healing. Also crystal wands as well. And also um, so many other things. Have you cried when you do your yoni, the armory, or you're uh, using wands or using um, the egg? Yes, so many times. I've cried so many times and it's been so beautiful and healing to have that release. Absolutely. Yeah. And even just placing your hands over your womb, it's just such a simple practice that any woman can do. I do it the moment I wake up, one hand on my heart, one hand on my womb, and I just like breathe with her as my belly like goes in and out, just breathe with my womb and I just connect in with her. I see how she's feeling. And I do that many times during the day. I'll just put my hand on her and I'll just talk to her and connect with her. And also I have so many other tips, um, especially like leading up to bleeding and when you're actually bleeding. Um, But definitely one of the biggest things is just connecting to your womb and just feeling the emotions that are there. That is one of the biggest healing things I've done alongside ancestral healing, the yoni eggs, many other things. It's just placing your hands there and building a relationship with her and feeling the energy there. There could be grief, rage, sadness, and give yourself as long as you need to feel all those emotions, however long it needs to take, however many months. But you will feel when you've gone through a massive release and your womb will feel lighter and you'll feel like a different woman. I think it's one of the most impactful and life-changing practices is to reconnect with your womb. Yes. Not only like getting reacquainted with her, but also learning to forgive yourself for hating her. 
mm. or being so angry at her for your painful periods like yes like for the fibroids for the ovarian cysts for losing your ovary like there is just so much that we have to release before we embrace her and a lot of yes. times we don't get to do, women don't even think about that how we have hated our wombs we don't even like our touch our stomachs you know because it's just like all the fat that goes along with your belly mm. and just like the anger, the frustration, the resentment for, and there, I know a lot of women who have endometriosis because it's at different levels. So the pain is different, you know, yes. a lot of women are like, I hate, I hate this. I just want a hysterectomy, you know? So it's mm. like also this coming back to forgiveness of the pain that she has caused but when you start reconnecting, I just feel like for me, my periods improved. Like oh, yes. I still, I still have painful periods, especially if I had a stressful, like the last three months were stressful or last month, something happens. Like it's still reflected in my period very much. So that's when I'm like, okay, I'm like, I need to do more practices around this time or when mm. the situation arises again. So you get to reconnect yourself and know yourself better, but it starts with, for me, it has started with forgiveness. And then just like you said, touch your woman. Hi, how are you? Like, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry, I neglected you. And it's just like little things like that, that start making a difference. And progressively you start adding practices. And one of the things that I was going to ask you to talk a little bit about is sexual energy is stored in our womb from past partners and not only yes. past partners, but their partners that they slept with especially if the if the men are not conscious and don't know about this and the energetics it's like how to cleanse our wombs from our past partners from their inner sexual energy and their partners too like how much that makes a difference yes it makes such a massive difference oh my gosh i have done that after every partner i've been with and yes. once again using yoni eggs and crystal wands really helps doing core cutting so you can find i'm sure you can find that on online or a practitioner that can do that with you so cutting energetic cords between you and that that lover if you're single then spending as much time as you can being single and not having another lover for as long as you feel to so you can keep just like purifying as much as you need to and releasing that energy from your womb you know booking in a session with someone or hiring someone that's specialized in this would would really really help um in Australia, I know a woman who created something called Yoni Mapping. And now there's practitioners all around the world. So women tuning in, you can just Google that Yoni Mapping. And these are women that um, have been trained in understanding the womb and the Yoni. And you can have a session with this woman. There's women in America, Europe, Australia. I don't know where else at the moment. Um, and they actually, with your permission, insert during the session insert their fingers inside of you and just like release tension from the walls and help you to release trauma and release things from past lovers and memories and it's just a really sacred intimate space between you and this beautiful woman who's been trained in this to help the, the yoni to release so that's another thing as well um and as you said like forgiveness you know forgiving yourself for anything you experience with that partner forgiving your ex when the time is right that will also help your womb to let go as well yeah because we trap all i for me and this is what i highly believe we trap all of our unprocessed emotions in our wombs yes and there is the source of i highly believe that there's also a genetic factor a medical factor to it but there's also this energetic factor that if we don't release all these emotions, they get trapped in our wombs. And this is why women have so many issues yes. with the reproductive system. And I say that because I am one of those women. Mm -hmm. And that's why I can speak so with my 100% my being because I believe this because I have, believe, I have had every single <laughs> menstrual cycle issue and surgeries and losing an mm -hmm. ovary and all of this. And so for me, it's like, how come I never knew about this work? Like, I wish I had known this. Maybe I would have saved my ovary from being, um, you know, from losing it, or I would have taken care of myself. Like mm. I thought I had 
eating something bad and I was just having a painful stomach ache. That's what I thought. And no, it was uh, a cyst engulfing my ovary and it ruptured and they ended up, it was an emergency surgery. So they ended up removing the entire thing. And my ovary was perfectly fine. Like the surgeon could have saved my ovary, but he didn't know. I don't know what happened there. I'm never going to know, but I was told when I had my surgery four years ago, I was told that that ovary was perfectly fine and they could have saved it. And I was just angry. I was was livid. I was livid. And I remember just doing Mm. a lot of wound healings uh, with the yoni. I I just remember doing so much work also because there were men literally there touching me with, and then all this medical artifacts and all of these things that they do for Mm. surgery. So it's also like releasing that energy from me after years, really? after years, you know? So it's like, how can we bring more awareness to women to reconnect with their wombs, to reconnect with their cycles, with their source power? So they yes. can, pre- it's like preventative medicine in a way, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing that story. I can only imagine what that would have been like for you. My heart aches knowing that. Yeah. My sisters go through this, you know, but so grateful that you're sharing this message with so many women. Yeah. And I decided, and I think that's why I decided to go vocal with my story. Cause I'm like, I don't want women to go through what I did. I don't want women to be yeah. open or yeah. have a hysterectomy because they hate their periods and their wounds. Absolutely. So bad. And sometimes it's necessary. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes the women are like, I'd rather not have that than experience life the way I am experiencing life with so yes. much pain. And that is so heartbreaking because they're like, they, d- and when, and this is what I found. How can we, or I'm going to ask you the question for these women that have painful menstrual cycles due to endometriosis or whatever reproductive health issue they have, how can you like if because I feel like when they look at your content, they're probably like, oh, she has no idea the pain that I go through. And they have all this energy of anger because they're like, she how can she tell me to reconnect with my womb and love my womb or whatever when I have all this period? So like, what can you say to those women? Mm, great question. Yes. What I invite all of these beautiful women, if that's you and you're listening to this, is to just allow yourself to be open, you know, just allow yourself to go, okay, there may be information here that could really help me. You know, I could completely heal my womb, you know, if I soak in this information and and to honor your anger. It's okay if you're angry. You know, it's totally okay if you're angry and it's totally okay if you're feeling frustrated and, you know, that's painful to go through something like that. You know, it's absolutely painful. And to just know that there are other alternatives and that there are women just like me and just like this beautiful woman here that are wanting the best for you and that don't want you to suffer. So just acknowledging, wow, this woman is sharing her story because she doesn't want women like me to continue to go through this. She actually cares that much. She's willing to walk away from even family members just to talk about this. Yeah. And I didn't even think about it that way, but yeah. And also you, have you had any of your family not support your work or are they like, is your family a bringing more open or how Mm -hmm. has that impacted you? (laughs) Yeah, I, yeah, it's definitely brought up a lot of things within my family. Um, and yeah, I've experienced a lot of like hurtful comments from, from people in my family that I didn't expect. I definitely haven't felt that supported and I've just continued to, to keep going because I'm like, this is my story and, you know, I'm here to, to shift the lineage. And so it, it used to really hurt me and now I just created boundaries where that doesn't happen anymore and they're not seeing my content, some of them, and that just works for me. So I'm like, well, they don't need to see it anyway. You know, they, and so I've just learned to accept it and embrace it and go, well, this is, this is part of my mission. And what it's like that energy of whatever it takes, you know, whatever it takes. Yeah, I, I do. I, it's so funny because when I posted about my period blood rituals, I didn't tell my older sister, 
um and she's very different than me but she like i'm like i have so much trauma because of my sister growing up with her she was like like my role model for sibling you know so like i've had come a long way with her and we have a great relationship but i never told her about this ritual so she has she doesn't have social media but she has pinterest and i remember all my posts i had on like a few years ago streamlined my business where all my Facebook posts and Instagram goes directly to my Pinterest and I haven't changed it they're just there the settings are the same so all my posts are going to my Pinterest and right now one day she's scrolling through Pinterest looking for something she finds my post and she screenshots sends it to me what the hell is this <laughs> And I'm just like, oh yeah, by the way, I do that. And I don't think they I don't think they understand my business a hundred percent. They really don't. They don't understand it. And I just didn't really explain much, but I just said I started doing that after my surgery. And that's all I said. Mm. But it was really funny because like my family didn't know. I never told them. I just posted one day and then my mom's like, that's from the devil. Take it down. You shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> and it's just, I have my mom on Facebook now. My, like, I have some family relatives that I just blocked <laughs> or whatever. Cause I'm like, yeah. they don't need to see this. They don't need to see this. Totally. But it's been yep. very interesting. And like you, like <laughs> sports not there because they don't understand it and even if they did they still wouldn't support it a hundred percent you know because yeah. they i'm an immigrant here in the united states so my parents want me to have like a corporate job want me to uh -huh. marry children you know the ideal life that they think is their ideal life or the proper life but it's like i'm so unconventional and such a <laughs> rebel and against everything that i'm like i got divorced <laughs> i don't do that i you know it's like always yes. the wild woman. Mm. What does that signify for you too? Mm, love that you shared that. Mm -hmm. I just love seeing women do what they want to do. Oh. <laughs> oh, the wild woman. Oh my gosh. So much to say about this. But for me to bring it into utter simplicity, to me, the wild woman is a woman that has reclaimed herself in what her actual truth is and has reclaimed her relationship with the earth, has reclaimed her relationship to whatever God is for her. And so I feel like the word wild has become quite stigmatized and people see it as something that's immature and destructive and um, not responsible, where to me it's actually the complete opposite. I find it the most responsible thing to do actually is rewild yourself back to your original nature. So to me, woman is like the original wild creature, you know, and I say that with so much respect as in like we shed our skin every month. We, our senses are phenomenal. Like when I bleed, I'm just like so sensitive, like so wow like even my smell my sense of smell and it's we're very wolf-like in that nature you know and we need our independence we need so much space you know a lot of people talk about how mas the masculine needs freedom but what about the wild woman too she needs so much freedom mm -hmm. and we're also incredibly loyal as well and so to me the wild woman has remembered who she is nobody owns her she is unconventional she is unpredictable she's connected to the earth she is connected to her primal nature as much as her holy nature as much as her quiet nature all parts of her she is connected to all the different archetypes and i feel like the woman who has really described this probably the most powerfully is clarissa pinkola estes who wrote women who run with the wolves oh yes Oh my gosh, she just Bible. Under, oh, it's literally the Bible. The Bible. Like, yeah. The way that she understands women's psyche is just so profound. And so, yeah, just there's so much more I can say about it, but just a woman that's really remembered who she is outside of the constructs of society and not limits herself in any way. She's just completely her own and there's no one like her and she doesn't follow the rules and she's very unconventional. Uh, let me just sit with that energy. That was just so beautiful. And I don't think a lot of people understand the archetype of the wild woman that it lives in each of us. And we try yes. to cut her down by being the good girls, by being oh. the people pleasers, <laughs> the codependent, and all this like, 
the suppression of our true being. And I guess like coming back to our purity is coming back to being the wild women that we are. And this yes. that is truly us because we are very chaotic. Yes. in our beings every single day multiple times a day <laughs> and I think we shouldn't feel shame for that like at my yes. I was talking to some friends and they they already know about they, they make fun of me because they know I'm in alignment with the moon with my menstrual cycle and they're like oh god it's a waxing gibbous what is coming up what face of Mary's menstrual cycle is because waxing gibbous is around the time I was born I was born in a waxing gibbous moon so that's when my energy is the highest I'm energetic actually I'm a red moon cycle too so it's right during the after the full moon the full moon after the full moon is when I'm bleeding so like I'm in my most power I'm energetic I'm the opposite of the white moon white moon cycle I don't follow the ovulation that you're supposed to be glowing I'm like no that's mm -hmm. my ovulation. I'm in, in in it, in the mess. Like I'm in the emotion. <laughs> That's when it happens. So for me, it's, it's the flip side of the the standard, you know, um, yes. cycle definition. So it's like, no, you have to claim what is true for you and your energetic. You have to reconnect with how you feel every day, like your energy yes. and everything. And don't be trying to put yourself into this cycle thinking method that it's still not you because it's it, your wild woman needs to be expressed and liberated and free and yes herself like every single day not because I tried to fit myself into the cycle sinking and I would be frustrated because I'm like but that's not how I feel like I'm supposed to be doing all these things even with my business I'm like that's that's too masculine that's too masculine mm. I feel like doesn't make me feel like in my feminine so I switched and I'm like I'm just gonna track my own thing and go with my own thing and I still track my cycle like on an app and everything or in my journal too but now it's like I get to know me entirely and how yes. how I am every single day of my moon you know and that is just like reconnecting with a wild woman yes yes absolutely I love that so much do you yes. do cycle thinking um, no, I stopped doing that a long time ago. My wound just did its own thing. Yeah. yeah. So she just bleeds when she want to bleed. Yeah. And like, sometimes she'll come a bit late and I'm just like, she knows what she's doing. And yeah, it's just like, I just trust her so deeply. And it's like, when we trust our womb, we trust our bodies, like they know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, we give our bodies what they need and they know what to do. So yeah, I love that. Yeah. So I want to ask you something that really caught my attention when we were just when I found you when I connected with you It's being a well fucked woman. <laughs> what, does, what is the embodiment of that? How does that feel? How does a well fucked woman feel for you that mm. we can tap into that energy? Mm, I love this question so much and I love that we get to talk about it on your podcast yes. <laughs> so to me the well-fucked woman is a woman who is just so you know fucked open by life and you don't have to be in a relationship with someone to be well-fucked you know that is not true but like you allow life to penetrate you. It's like the, the feminine wants to be full and the masculine wants to be empty. Hence why when we connect with a man and he's so present, he's, he's, he's in emptiness and that's what actually turns us on. And he can fill us up with that infinite consciousness, you know, and, and the, the woman, we love to be full, like full of life, full of love, full of just everything. That's the feminine she is here to receive. So being a well-fucked woman is being, it's being, um, it's being so connected to <clears throat> your life source within you and life and allowing life to penetrate you. And that could literally be, you watch a hummingbird suck from a flower and you're just like, oh my god like it's just like allowing yourself to just be like oh and of course like through sex like how much can you open up to your lover can you go even deeper how much can you take yourself even deeper and you walk differently in the world like for me personally I when I'm you know well fucked I am just so radiant it's just like my energy is so magnetic everything just comes to me people treat me differently in my presence they are just you know some people don't even know how to respond they will like glitch out like it's just 
that energy is so potent. It's our purity. It's our magnetic, radiant, feminine essence. And it's actually like our power and it protects us, you know, because we're just so open. We think that by closing our hearts, we'll be safe. But it's actually when we're fully open that we're the safest, you know, when we're so open and completely connected, you know, we're safe. And so, oh, I just feel so confident and radiant and blissed out. And, oh, I just, I just want to give to everyone around me when I'm well fucked. Mm, that's so good because then women can be like, because when you, when you hear that, a lot of people think it has to do with just sex, you mm -hmm. know, but it's beyond that. It's living an orgasmic life. And then a lot yes. of people are like, but I don't understand. So when you, that's why I'm like, what is the embodiment? How does it feel for you? Because then women can connect to be like, oh, oh my God, I've had those moments. Is that what it means? <laughs> you know, so it, it, it's, it really resonates. It's going to resonate with a lot of women. Yes. So like, yes, what yes. can you say to the woman who feels a lot of shame after, like, let's talk about it, the sexual act of being well fucked. Like, what can you say to her after finishing that when she feels shame, she feels dirty, she feels sinful because she's using she's trying to get validation or trying to get this man to love her. Mm. <clears throat> I feel if that woman's like feeling shame, because she's trying to get a man to love her, just loving herself through that, you know, not, not shaming herself or thinking that there's something wrong with her or she's doing something wrong or dirty, but just going, wow, like this is that really, really innocent part of me. That's actually just desiring to be fully loved as I am and know that there's nothing wrong with me. So just bringing that compassion. Compassion is one of the most healing gifts we can ever give ourselves. And to other people, it's just like, wow, there is nothing wrong with me. I'm just doing the best that I can, and I don't have to feel shame for anything. But how would I like to experience being with a man now that I have this awareness and know that this pattern is coming up? Do I want to continue playing in this pattern? Is there more for me to learn here? Or am I ready to have a different kind of connection with a lover? that feels more empowering and that I feel safe to participate in. Yeah. And I think the safety factor is so important, not even yes. for just to be with someone else, but also to feel safe, feeling pleasure through anything. Yes. Like, I don't think like for me, for example, and I can say this because women are going to relate to like, I was always taught that pleasure or having fun, like I should be studying, I should be doing all of this instead of having fun. And I was punished. The last time I remember being playful is I was punished because I got home late when I was little. So right away, I mm -hmm. shut down feeling fun and pleasure. And I just I still probably had fun, but it was not at the same level. Because I was yes. like, How did I disconnect from my because I'm very silly. I'm very, silly. <laughs> I'm very goofy. I'm very funny. <laughs> And I don't really let people see that side of me because that terrifies me. But that is a huge factor in pleasure because you have to be playful. So yes. It's like, it's like doing this work of feeling safe to be funny, silly with myself so I can bring that to the world and not having shame like I'm going to be made fun of or I'm going to be punished or yes. something bad is going to happen. You know, so it's like, it's also that con reconnection and awareness. So you can be like, I can experience just drinking a cup of coffee and smelling the aroma, yes, pleasure, and just little things like that start like they can, they can help you, you know, or for example, and this has actually happened today. This is so funny. And so good timing. I was texting with someone, uh, a previous partner that I was with. And he was just asked, trying to indirectly say that he wanted to be with me again. And I just said, no, I'm, I'm celibate right now. I'm just doing my own thing. I'm in a deep, deeply committed relationship with myself. And I was eating a salad with salmon and I love pizza crust. So I told him, you know what? I'm getting more pleasure and orgasms by eating my salad and my pizza crust than I ever did with men. I said that to him. <laughs> But I didn't mean it in a degrading or emasculating yes. way. It meant it that I am so in love with yes. myself and pleasure. And obviously he took it wrong, but I explained to him, I'm like, no, I'm just so happy where I am that I just don't yes. want energy to come in, you know? 
So it's like, I love little that. Things, yeah, it's little things like that, that I'm just like, Oh, my God, I have been healing, healing has been working when it comes to this. And I'm like, it's, it's exciting. Yes. Little milestones, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love that so much. So what are some practices that oh, have helped you to tune into your pleasure into feeling like having that embodiment of being a well fucked woman? Mm, definitely one of the main things is giving myself permission to explore my sexuality so in all the different stages you know looking back I'm grateful that I just kept exploring my sexuality even when I was in that more maiden stage and looking for external validation there was still so much innocence looking back of like I didn't know any better so I just love to see all the different stages I've gone through with sexuality um you know, and just giving myself space to explore. I feel like that's really important, you know, moving away from any stigmas or dogmas and just being curious and playful about your pleasure, whether you're celibate or not, you still get to feel pleasure and you still get to honor yourself how, however you want, whatever chapter you're in in your life. You know, and for me, I definitely feel a good place to start is just to, you know, really connect to food, connect to like, sensations like just start there instead of feeling like you know you've got to change the way that you have sex or you know pleasure yourself sometimes that can be overwhelming for women especially if you've gone through a lot of trauma just start small by like you know noticing if you have you know constriction just like soften your belly take deeper breaths throughout the day bring more mindfulness into your day where what only feels good you know, like on your skin, like sleep naked. That is a big one that changed my life. Mm. Sleeping naked with yourself is so beautiful. And the way that you eat food, can you slow it down a little bit? Like you said about the coffee, like breathe it in, like allow it to just like tantalize your senses and mm. to start there with pleasure and then see where it takes you because you will keep, you'll, you'll want to explore more. It's the human nature. And just keep reminding yourself that it's innocent and that it's pure and that there is nothing unholy about it because it's really just like, if you look around you, you like we're here to experience life. Like you walk past a tree, you know, I love touching trees. I, I want to feel the texture of things. I was at the beach today and just putting my hands through the sand. I was just like, oh, it's just like, wow. <laughs> like, so I feel the, like just start like there. Living a delicious life in another way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one question that I always ask my, uh, my guest and women or men that come in my podcast, and you can answer this, however you feel led to answer it. It's like, what is your truth now? Mm. That is around pleasure or just everything, anything, just anything that you feel led <sighs> to say, it can be the truth of who you are. It can be like, what are, what are you feeling called to share? That is your truth. Um, I usually explain it like under all the conditions, programming, belief systems, colonization, under everything, the colonization, everything. What is your truth? Wow, I love your question so much. My truth right now is that every single one of us is sacred and whole and divine and abundant, and there is nothing that we are missing inside of ourselves, and none of us are left behind, you know, every single one of us have everything we need within us to rise and to claim what it is that we're, we're here to claim in this life and that no one is more special than anyone else. We are all children of God. We are all children of source of creator and that we can absolutely be, have, create, do, experience anything that we want and that we are truly unlimited in every single way. Not even the sky is the limit. Mm, so powerful. So powerful. It's, been it's been such a pleasure having you here on the podcast having this beautiful empowering conversation i hope you really enjoyed it i loved it <laughs> yeah so where can everyone find you if they want to connect more with you your wisdom your medicine your offerings where can people find you amazing um so you can find me on instagram and facebook that's where i spend most of my time and in both of my bios there there is a link to all of my work so i work with like 90 percent women but still men if you're tuning into this i work with men as well that come in and 
and into my vortex and ask about my offerings. Just all of my programs are for women at the moment. And also I have a free private women's Facebook group. You can also find in my bio as well. So that's where I will be. And thank you so much for having me on here. It's been amazing. It's been such empowering and beautiful and an act of remembrance, remembrance mm. of this conversation. And I'm, I'm, I hope it's a call to a lot of women to come back to themselves, to come back to their, remember who they are, reclaim their wild woman within themselves and really be curious about this work, yes. the, womb, the pleasure and all of it. And I just hope that anyone that finds you through this podcast gets to experience your power, your energy, and just your wisdom and everything. And I'm so honored that you were here talking to me about all this. Oh, thank you so much for your beautiful words. Yes to all of that. And I'm just so grateful for you and all that you're doing for women of this world. And yeah, you're beautiful. Keep going. I see you. I celebrate you and I honor you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good rest of the day. <laughs> you too. Bye. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation on the Feminine Truth Podcast. This podcast is for you, for me, for us, for the Feminine Collective. Thank you for spending your time and energy with us. I so, so, so appreciate it. Please, it would mean so much if you could share this in your Instagram stories, in your Facebook stories, or everywhere so this message gets spread and others can find this podcast and this conversation. And if you feel like someone needs to hear this message, please share with them. Um, I would be so grateful for you and let us know your thoughts, how this has helped you how you connected with this topic or how this has felt in your body and lastly if you feel the pull I would be immensely grateful if you could take the time to leave a review so more people can find my podcast and this conversation I'm sending you so much love and I'll see you on the next episode <laughs>